Welcome to the Idiot's Guide. I'm Mackie Hall. Adobe Illustrator is one of the most powerful design applications on the market today. It's also incredibly complex. There are a pile of videos detailing exactly how to run it. However, something that's constantly ignored is the toolbar itself. So today we're going to focus on getting started with Adobe Illustrator, how to create and open a new document, and then giving you a quick rundown of the toolbar. So without further ado, let's get started. First thing we're going to do is we are going to create a new document. Note that in our new document window, you can select the exact page size that you want. In this case, we will have a width of 1,000 points, height of 1,000 points, a single artboard, and the RGB color mode. You can also title your, your piece. In this case, we'll write template, and we'll create. Before we get started, I want to note that we are using the Essentials layout. You can see it at the top right hand corner of your screen. We are also using Smart Guides to see that. You can select View, scroll down to Smart Guides, or of course select Control U. We'll be talking about key command recommendations very shortly. With that in mind, you'll see at the bottom center of your page, we will offer key command recommendations as well. Please note that at the top left-hand corner of your screen, there is the toolbar. Let's first go over creation of a new document if you've already opened Adobe Illustrator. The first thing you want to do is select File, select either Open or New. Of course, you can select Control-N for New, Control-O for Open. If we select New, note that our new document window comes up that we just saw. We're going to close this. First thing, the first thing we want to do is we want to look over at our left hand corner and you'll notice our toolbar. You can stack it different ways by clicking this arrow in the top left hand corner and you can either stack it completely vertically or you can click it and customize your menu to how you see fit. This is the default toolbar right here. To start, what we'll do is we'll create a shape on our artboard. I'm going to click on this. I'll click anywhere on the page and I'll create a rectangle that's 200 points wide by 200 points tall. You can enter it in either of these two text boxes right here. Next thing we want to do is we want to center it horizontally and vertically if we want to. To make the align tools visible if you don't see them, you can select Window, Align, or of course Shift F7. All right, the first thing we have is the Selection tool. This is the tool that we use to select and move elements as we see fit. The way we use it is we can click on our element, drag it anywhere we so choose. Now, if we want to undo those actions, we can always go to Edit, Undo, Move, or whatever that action may be, or you can select Control Z. Feel free to select Control Z multiple times until you get back to your original position. The nice thing about the selection tool is you can select and deselect objects simply by clicking on or off them. Again, we'll undo to bring that back to center. Next to it, we've got the direct selection tool. This works just like the selection tool with a little bit of emphasis on individual anchor points. When we talk about anchor points, it's these little corners that define the piece or these edges that define a piece. They're called anchor points. And so with direct selection, you can actually select individual anchor points and then move them. You can either click and drag them. I'll undo that. Or, of course, you can use your directional keys and move them around as you see fit. Again, we'll undo that. The direct selection tool can also help you adjust specific parts of an image. For example, if I drag across the corner of this shape, you'll notice the bevel corner or the bevel point being visible. You can click and drag that to bevel your corners as well, just like that. Click off of that, you can see what it did. Let's go ahead and undo that. Please note there are several elements on this toolbar that I will not touch because they don't apply to the basics. The next element of the toolbar that we're going to be using, below the selection and direct selection tool, is the magic wand tool. Those are more advanced tools, so we really won't be addressing those too much in our introduction. 
However, the next set of tools down, we certainly will. This is the pen tool. The pen tool allows us to draw free form shapes. You can click and release and you're starting to draw shapes by line. Let's undo that. Or of course, you can click and drag and watch what happens when you do. You can draw curves. With some practice, you can draw about any shape using your pen tool. Let's undo that. Again, we undo by clicking Control Z. The next tool that's available is the curvature tool. We don't use this tool a lot, but it is an easy way to draw a curved shape. All you need to do is draw three points to initiate a curve. For instance, we'll click on the left side of the page. We'll click on the center of the page and watch what happens when I start to move to the right side of the page. The curve is initiated and that's a great way to draw out your curves. Let's undo that. Next is the type tool. This is obvious. We can click on any part of the page and right away we can start writing our type. I'll write this as a test. And with the type tool selected, we can click on any elements of our type. We can single click and select a position within our text. We can double click and select a word, or we can triple click and select the entire type element. When that entire type element is selected, we can adjust our type size. We can change our type style or our character. And we can also change, if it is available, the different type styles within that character. We've also got the line segment tool. We generally, this, it's a good way to draw a line. If we hold our shift key, notice it's a perfectly flat line. Let's undo that. Next is our rectangle tool. A rectangle tool is obviously a very powerful tool because it allows us to create rectangles. Notice I can either click and drag my rectangle I'll undo that. Or of course I can click and release and then I can select a shape or rectangular shape with specific dimensions. In this case, let me make it 200 points wide by 100 points tall. There you go. What if we want to do more than a rectangle? If we click and hold a rectangle tool, notice that a submenu pops up that allows us to create ellipses, polygons, stars, and even a flare. We don't use flares very much, but it's available for you. Again, all of these tools work in the same way that the rectangle tool does. Next, we've got our paintbrush tool. I don't use this often for basics. We will be using it again in advanced. The next tool we've got is our pencil tool. Now, this is a tool that I don't recommend using much. I prefer the pen tool over it, and you'll see why. If I click and start drawing with the pencil tool, I can get shapes, but it is not very exact. You're better off using the pen tool. If you're using a stylus, there's certainly room for the pencil tool. However, generally speaking, we're better off using the mouse for basic purposes. Let's undo that. Next, we've got the eraser tool, and that will allow us to erase either all or part of our shape. That certainly has a place. We've got our rotate tool, and this is very important because we can hover over our shape and we can click and drag and rotate it as we see fit. Let's undo that. If you hold your shift key down while rotating, note that your shape rotates in 45 degree increments. Also with our rotate tool, if our element is selected, for example, let's grab our selection tool, we can deselect our piece, we can select our piece, then we can select our rotate tool. If we double click on our rotate tool, note that our rotate window comes up and we can select a rotate angle. In this case, let's rotate it 30 degrees and we can select preview to see what that rotate angle looks like. If we like it, of course, we can select OK. If we want to copy that shape, we can select copy. And if we want to cancel, which we'll do now, we can select cancel. Next is our scale tool. It operates in a similar way to our rotate tool. With our element selected, again, we can grab our selection tool. We can select our piece. We can grab our scale tool. 
and we can click anywhere and drag it in and we can scale it as we see fit. Notice that it is non-proportional. If we want to scale it proportionately, we want to hold our shift key and right away our shape will scale proportionately. Let's undo that. Now the rest of the tools on our piece are a width tool. We don't use that very much. Our free transform tool, that works very much like our scale tool. You can click on your piece, you can select free transform, and notice we can click and transform it. Again, we can scale it non-proportionately in various directions. This is a rarely used tool for me. Instead, I prefer using the scale tool. The next tool we've got is called our Shape Builder tool. This allows us to take shapes and either break them down or construct them bigger. That's a bit of an advanced tool. Next, what we've got here is our Perspective Grid tool. If you click on that, watch what happens. Our Perspective Grid pops up. This allows us to create forms or 3D shapes. It's a great piece to use. Let's close that by clicking on Hide Grid. Next, we've got our Mesh tool. It's another tool that is an advanced tool. We've got tutorials on that. We'll show you how to use that. And of course, we've got our gradient tool. This allows us to take our shapes and incorporate gradients with it. For example, if we grab our selection tool, we can click off of our shape, click back onto it. Then let's click on our gradient tool. And if our gradient tool has not popped up, we can double click on it to make our gradient window pop up. From there, we can just click on any gradient available. We'll just use the base gradient. And note right away, a gradient appears in our shape. We can manage our gradient rotation by adding a rotation. Let's select 45 degrees. We'll enter that. And we can also change the color by double clicking inside the gradient slider. For instance, in this piece right here, let's change our color to green. There you go. Once done, we'll deselect that. We've got our eyedropper tool, that's very important. We've also got our blend tool. That allows us to take two different shapes and blend them together. For example, we can select our rectangle and blend it with our square by clicking on the bottom left-hand corner of each. And you see that they start to blend. We can customize our blend by double-clicking on our blend tool and selecting the blend options. In this case, let's change it from smooth color to specified steps, and let's give it three specified steps. We'll select preview to see what that looks like, and we'll click OK. Next, we'll deselect by selecting our selection tool and clicking anywhere on screen. A few more tools available, our symbol sprayer tool, we don't use that very much, column graph tool, we don't use that very much. We do touch on all of these elements. Our magnification or our zoom tool, you can select that and click anywhere on your page and it will zoom in. You can also hold your alt key and zoom out. There are a couple key commands that I find very handy. One, if you want to size something up to 100%, you can hit control one. If you want to show the entire artboard or page, you select control zero. And if you want to zoom in, you can select control plus and zoom out by selecting control minus. Last thing on our toolbar is our fill and stroke windows. Here's how we manage that. Let's go grab our rectangle tool. We'll click on that and we'll click anywhere on screen and drag out a rectangle. If we want to change our shape to a white fill and black stroke, we're going to select white fill and black or the default fill and stroke from the bottom left hand corner of the toolbar. We'll click on that straight away and our colors change to white fill and black stroke. To change our fill, we double click on our fill and let's select a blue fill. We'll click on blue in the slider and then from our color picker, we'll select the appropriate blue. That looks good about there. Next, if we want a red stroke, we'll select our stroke by double clicking on it and then we'll select red from the slider and then we'll select the appropriate red once again. We'll click OK. If we want to change the thickness of that particular stroke, we can always select the stroke weight from the top bar, or of course, you can select window, stroke, or control F10. Let's change our stroke to 10. 
And that covers our basic tour of the Adobe Illustrator toolbar. So there you have it. One thing I'd encourage you to do is poke around with Adobe Illustrator, play with the elements on the toolbar, and see what you can get out of them. Beyond that, if you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comments section below. Otherwise, throw me a like. I'd really appreciate that. I'd appreciate it just a little bit more if you subscribed. We'll see you next time. See ya.